Sir Alfred James Munnings was known as having been one of England's finest artists who specialised in equestrian art, a painter of horses extraordinaire. Alfred Munnings was born on the 8th of October, 1878, at Mendham Mill, Mendham, Suffolk, England. Alfred attended Framlingham College at the age of 14 and was apprenticed to a Norwich printer, a designing and drawing firm, creating advertising posters while attending the Norwich School of Art in his spare time. This lasted for six years. When his apprenticeship ended, he became a full-time painter. Munnings also attended the Académie Julian in Paris for further study about 1903, where he adopted the advanced French system into his already very personal style, not unlike John Singer Sargent, who was his senior by about 20 years. By this time, Sargent was already an international sensation and his aura was inescapable in Europe and America. Following his Parisian training, Munnings developed a keen interest and a natural inclination for working on the spot, in the open air. His ability to quickly grasp the environment and put it into paint was quite evident. The ability to add animation and tonal sophistication to a scene is remarkable. He further, more and more, becomes captivated by the grace and elegance of the horse. In all manner of situations and circumstances, he found equestrian themes could be adapted to many different guises, including the gypsy lifestyle, the fox hunters, and the working horse of rural farmlands. All are pictorially very natural in feeling with the quick ease of Munning's summary technique, which easily adds to the believability of the scene. His quick eye has been noted by others, as he could stop everything at a moment's notice, grab a new canvas for a sudden happenstance, that may be occurring and seize the moment. As can be seen by the paintings shown, Munnings is quite at home with painting the figure, the portrait or the horse. He is a natural draughtsman and his energy and colour sense are always on target. In person, at any art gallery, his work shines with the breath of nature, which is the goal of every artist of the natural world. Munnings was very prolific throughout his life. He had strong views and was not shy about them. Now, with respect to his work in composing pictures, it should also be noted, he is brilliant with all aspects of design. Whether a group of horses galloping into a stream or far afield chasing a fox, his combinations to grasp the scene and design it, appropriately and very naturally, are exciting to behold. On a large scale or much smaller, he can handle the difficulties with ease. One can also sense the urgency of a subject with his broad stroke of the brush whipping across the canvas, adding energy and texture to the well-studied production. Munnings married in 1920 to his second wife, also a skilled horsewoman, Violet McBride. There were no children from either marriage. His second wife was quite encouraging and suggested he accept commissions from society figures. Munnings's talent was employed as a war artist in World War I to the Canadian Cavalry Brigade under the patronage of Max Aitken. He painted many scenes, including in 1918 a portrait of General Jack Seeley mounted on his horse, Warrior, now in the collection of the National Gallery of Canada, Ottawa. Munnings worked on this canvas a few thousand yards from the German front lines. When General Seeley's unit was forced into a hasty withdrawal, the artist discovered what it was like to come under shell fire. The role of horses in the war effort was critical and underreported. In fact, horses for the war were the single largest commodity shipped to the front lines. Afterward, some 45 of Munnings's canvases were produced and later shown at an exhibition. Munnings was elected president of the Royal Academy of Arts in 1944. He was made a Knight Bachelor in July of the same year and was appointed a Knight Commander of the Royal Victorian Order in 1947. Munnings expressed his own philosophy on art and its purpose. What are pictures for? he asked. To fill a man's soul with admiration and sheer joy, not to bewilder and daze him. Truer words have not been spoken. We hope you enjoyed the presentation and consider subscribing for future topics on art. 